What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about anchor tonguing. So if you don't know what anchor tonguing is, it's simply this. It's basically when you anchor your tongue somewhere in your mouth, Typically for instrumentalists, it's behind their teeth and you're actually using your tongue more of in this motion instead of a free floating tongue where you actually articulate in different areas of your tongue. So the question is, is it wrong? Is it bad or is it good? Well, the answer is yes and no. It's really not that simple. Let me explain why. So in my development as a saxophone player, I never really had a lot of issues per se with articulating. Whatever I needed to accomplish actually happened, whether it was in classical music or in jazz music, it never really was a hindrance to me. That was until I started venturing out into other woodwinds, particularly, par particularly, particularly the clarinet. So I had a really good clarinet teacher up in North Carolina. And when I would go for my lessons, he actually noticed a lot of movement going on when I articulated in this area of my throat, which actually led down the path of him uh, kind of determining that I was anchor tonguing. Now, I have thought about this before through some students that I had and trying various ways to get them to articulate better. And I determined that anchor tonguing for some of those students was actually a hindrance. It all kind of honestly deals with our physical makeup. So what I mean by physical makeup is everybody's oral cavity inside of here gets very, very strained. And a quote by Donald Senta, who if you don't know who he is, let me play a clip for you really, really quickly right now. <laughs> In doing some research on this topic, I came across a dissertation. I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, but this student actually, uh, I believe he interviewed Donald Senta, and he said this right here. I anchor tongue as a classical player. When you start getting inside the mouth, you're in a very funny territory. We are all different. I tongue pretty far back on my tongue. I have proof of that. I'm an advocate of whatever you need to make it sound great. And so what I mean by physical makeup is simply this. Everybody's oral cavity is different. So let's say you have a really, really short tongue. Well, you might not even be able to anchor tongue because it's just physically impossible. Whereas if you have a very long tongue and you know, you tell somebody with a long tongue, hey, I want you to tongue with the tip of your tongue to the reed, which once again, we don't necessarily do this. It's more a little bit further down. But even if you're close to the tip, that could lead to a very, very awkward feeling in that player's uh, oral cavity. So that's what I mean by physical makeup. And so honestly, I'm pretty much online with that. If nothing is deterred from your playing, and so what I mean is you're accomplishing everything that you want to do as a musician with the way that you're tonguing now, then honestly, why change? If it's not broken, then don't try to fix it. However, if you're going to go down a different path and try something new, I advise you try these exercises here. So I stole this straw from one of my kids' high C packages. I know we're all anti-straw, but this one happened to be around, sorry. But what you can do is this. Obviously, you'll put and blow into the straw. We'll pretend this finger is my tongue. And you're going to use a free-floating tongue and actually do this motion right here to the front of the straw while continuing to blow air through the straw. I'll get really close to the camera, but there's a specific sound that you want to hear. Let's see if we can, hopefully, uh, I can pick it up on this, uh, on this iPhone. So hopefully you were able to pick that up. It's a slight suction sound that you want to get. So when you actually transition from straw to mouthpiece, you're actually, once again, you're not, well, at least my advice is to not tongue tip of the tongue, the tip of the reed. Uh, where you tongue is varies from person to person. I would probably honestly say I tongue pretty far back. But coming from a background of anchor tonguing on the saxophone, when I switched over to clarinet, that's where my problems actually ensued. So for me, uh, anchor tonguing was a detriment because I couldn't actually have the voicing I need on the clarinet and sustain my tongue anchored behind my teeth. Let me cut to a clip of me playing clarinet right now. So whenever I start a practice session, I always play uh, kind of what comes natural, organic. I don't plan anything. I just play a couple of notes just to get my fingers moving before I actually start the long tones and scale exercises, et cetera, et cetera. But through time and through doing this exercise, I've actually unanchored my tongue from behind my teeth to more of a free floating uh, position in my mouth to be able to articulate. Now, is it perfect? It is 
<laughs> so far from perfect. Of all the things in my playing, I would honestly say my articulation is the worst and the biggest thing that I need to actually fix. So that kind of led me down this path of trying different things, uh, not anchor tonguing so much on the saxophone, not anchor tonguing on clarinet. And honestly, as a woodwind doubler, I think it's more advantageous for me to not anchor tongue at all. That way I don't get caught in bad habits of uh, switching from instrument to instrument. So anyway, check out my video I did on ghost tonguing. I got all kinds of things on articulation and I'll probably be coming out with a couple more videos. Leave me a comment down below if you actually anchor tongue and let me know if it's, uh, if it's preventing you from doing what you wanna do or you have no issues or maybe some ways that you unanchor your tongue. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, and I am out.